politics, commentary, entertainment, sports, news, and opinion. Now, here is Steve Malzberg. It's not like it's not we, like haven't, we seen haven't seen this problem. problem coming for over a year. And it hasn't, it, it's not like we haven't seen over the last five or six months uh, these terrorists moving in, taking control of Western Iraq. Uh, now they've taken control of Mosul. They're 100 miles from Baghdad. And what's the president doing? Taking a nap. All right, folks. And as we mentioned earlier with that, he uh, left the podium. And uh, joining Mary and I right now, Ed Rollins, senior political analyst for Fox News and national campaign director for uh, the uh, Reagan Bush 84 campaign. Hello, Ed. And uh, say hello to uh, Mary as well, sir. Steve and Mary, how are you today? I'm good. Thanks for joining us. Thank you My very pleasure. much. You. Always, always a pleasure to speak to you. All right, uh, before we get to a bunch of other things, that was John Boehner today uh, storming off the podium in dramatic fashion after he was referring to what's going on in Iraq and saying that the president for the last several years has been napping, and that was it. He was gone. I thought it was very effective uh, uh, dramatics. But um, here we go again. Uh, something else that's going to hurt uh, the president and possibly the Democrats uh, heading into November? Well, it's going to also hurt the country. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, we spent trillions of dollars and thousands of lives and hundreds of thousands of men uh, and women who fought hard to maintain a st stable government. Uh, and I think all the warning signs were there that the moment we got out of there, uh, the, the country would fall apart, and it's doing that. And I think to a certain extent, uh, it's irresponsible for both what the president did by not leaving a force behind, as all of his military people advised him to do, and now we're going to have to live the consequences. I mean, it's a, it's a terrible story when you see uh, the afternoon news of, of plane loads of Americans being uh, being you know, uh, flown out of the country, in a country that we uh, put a big investment into. And, and uh, so, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a failure. It's a miserable failure. And do you see Obama, though, being able to to actually take this this by the horns and, and actually lead? Because I just don't have much hope for that. I, I don't see this this happening with him. Well, he's not going to do anything. I mean, at the end of the at the end of the day, this, this yeah. was never a war he cared about. Uh, this was always uh, he always talked about the good war and the bad war, and this was the bad war. And from my perspective, all wars are bad, but at the end of the day, this was this was one where, where where you know the military was in there. We had an obligation to our military. We had an obligation to those people uh, in in the country that we had gone there and and you know inspired to try and create a democracy. But you know, at the end of the day, what they have now is, is billions of our dollars that we have left behind and and more weaponry and sophisticated weaponry than ever before. So my sense is the, the, the terrorists will march on and uh, and we're not going to do anything to stop them. Let's, uh, let's, before we get to Eric Cantor and the political landscape, let's talk a little bit about uh, uh, Sergeant Bergdahl. He uh, is being flown home possibly as we speak from Germany back here to the States. Um, wh what, what do you think uh, the uh, fallout from his return will be. It was one thing while he was in Germany. There was a, a huge back and forth with uh, the defense secretary yesterday with one congressman as to why he was there so long. Uh, now he's coming back. Um, is this going to get uh, center stage again? I, I think it'll get center stage. I mean, the problem is there's so many things on center stage right. at this point in time. Uh, you know, you, you can't, uh, you know, it, it, it's almost like a, a, a fighter gets knocked out by a phantom punch and people forget the 150 punches that went before them. In the case of this president, uh, every single day there's a new crisis, a new mistake. And I think to a certain extent uh, it, it's almost hard to keep up. To, uh, you know, I, I think there's a, there's a total lack of leadership. I think uh, that this deal was an extremely bad deal. Uh, the president totally disregarded the Congress, uh, and I think uh, he should pay a price for it. Uh, but I think there's so many things piling up on his plate, and he's certainly ineffective uh, at doing anything about them. Uh, that sooner or later, uh, you know, the American public will say, you know, his approval ratings are as low as any more modern president right today. Uh, uh, you know, there's there's a, there's a fatigue that's building up towards this presidency. Let's let's get on with it and move on. I think it's going to have a tremendous impact on the elections. I think we're going to elect the Senate, uh, certainly hold the House, uh, and I think to a certain extent, whoever runs on the Democratic ticket is going to try and get as far away from Obama, even if it's Hillary, as, as possible. But here's the thing. I, I, I honestly believe that Obama just doesn't care. He's going to do his thing. He's going to, to do it the way he wants it, and he has a pen and a phone, and he's doing more and more and more by executive decree. So it doesn't matter what the people think. It doesn't matter what his approval rating is. It doesn't matter if the Republicans win back the Senate. He's going to do what he wants, and he's got two years to do it, and no one seems to have any kind of political will to stop him. Well, we, you're absolutely right in my sense is that someone has to have a political will and has to be has to be 
uh, our side of the aisle. If, if not, uh, you know, at the end of the day here, uh, all he's going to do is reinforce his troops. Uh, uh, you know, sooner or later, I think he's going to overstep his bounds if he hasn't already in these executive orders, and, and we need to start bringing legal action against him. Uh, there is there is the judicial system that is supposed to be the referee, and I've, I've watched it when presidents have overstepped before. Uh, Nixon was slapped back on uh, highway impoundments and what have you, uh, and I think to a certain extent uh, some of the stuff he's doing here is uh, is in violation of the Constitution, and, and action needs to be brought uh, either by outside groups or certainly by, by Republicans in the Congress. Uh, to bring him to heel. Ed, let's talk about Hillary. Uh, she had problems today again, this time on Fresh Air, on NPR, of all places. Uh, she was challenged by the host about what he called her changing view on gay marriage or a contradictory view on gay marriage. And she said, you're playing with my words, and it got a little testy. And um, there's, there's, there's a, lot, a lot of talk uh, today uh, about um, how she's handling this tour. You know, going out and saying we were dead broke and then having to backtrack on that, being given a chance to take back the what difference does it make by Diane Sawyer and saying, no, I don't want to take that back or change any of that. Um, you know, we, we had uh, one prediction by Bill Crystal yesterday that six weeks from now, whether it'll stick after that, I don't know, but six weeks from now after the book tour is done, her poll numbers will be worse, he said, than when she started it. And it appears it might be headed in that direction. Oh, I think they are. She's now being looked at as a candidate, not, not as someone that's a former first lady or a former secretary of state. Uh, and, and candidates are treating more harshly. Equally as important, uh, you know, she has a lot of practice. Uh, uh, you know, running for office is just like any other uh, athletic endeavor. Uh, you know, you, you basically have to be uh, continually uh, getting stronger and, and more effective. Uh, and, and, and we, you know, we, we, fe we, fe we forget that she wasn't a very good candidate initially. She became a very strong candidate by the end of her battle with Obama, probably a much stronger candidate than he was in the end. By then it was too late. But she's been out of practice for a long time, and my sense is she's now not being treated as a sacred cow. She's being treated now, obviously, as a candidate who's going to be asked tough questions, and she better get practiced or she's going to basically uh, uh, diminish herself very quickly. But, Ed, do you think that she kind of thought she was going to get the same softball questions and she was going to get it treated with the same kid gloves that the media gave Obama? I mean, she seems to be the heir apparent, so she thought she was going to have a walk in the park with the media. So getting these types of questions, I think, are catching her off guard. Oh, I think, I think there's no question they are. And, 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 and once again, you know, she said, she said it for several months here where she's sort of been out of the limelight and sort of pick and choose what she, what she does, uh, you know, the high paid speeches you you're treated pretty respectfully by the audience uh she's now going to get uh, get into the grind and she's uh, you know she pulled the trigger with the book here uh, it's not going to be a love fest uh the book a terrible reviews uh by anybody that was looking for a serious book and i think to a certain extent she'll get pushed around uh, by the media uh, when she's out on the trail a little bit uh, and there's a lot of a lot of democrats and certainly a lot of republicans that don't want to see uh uh, another Clinton in the White House, and, and she's going to face that scrutiny much quicker than I think she ever thought she was. Uh, two on Eric Cantor, uh, Ed, and one is um, what do you attribute uh, the uh, outcome to? And number two, Tom DeLay, former majority leader, uh, who of course had to uh, relinquish his post, uh, said yesterday on this show that the worst thing that uh, Eric Cantor could do would be to resign that post because it's going to focus all the attention on internal squabblings within the GOP and as we head towards the midterms. So, of course, he did resign effective July 31st. Uh, there are two names that have emerged, uh, McCarthy and Sessions. Uh, one key Tea Party uh, uh, has said uh, no, he's not interested. So, uh, again, why do you think uh, the main reason for uh, Cantor's loss was, and do you think uh, it was the right thing to do for Cantor to uh, relinquish that post? First first of all, I think I think Cantor kind of lost touch with his district uh, in spite of his is uh, the claimer that he spent a lot of time there. You know, when you're 90, 90 minutes away from Washington, D.C., and, and you know, it's, it's, you sort of can watch it closely and you expect your congressman to be there, and, and you see a lot more of him traveling around the country raising money as a leader than, than obviously, as, uh, as your local congressman. Uh, equally as important, I think he tried to redefine the party. I mean, he obviously, uh, he and Boehner both talked about immigration when no one in their caucus wants to move an immigration bill forward, and I think that had an impact. And I think, uh, you know, just the, the conservative base, he comes from a very strong conservative district. Uh, I think they just basically, those who turn out in primaries, and, and, and it was an accelerated group there. I mean, it was, it was more, more votes than, than, than last time, and, and, and he substantially didn't do as well as he did last time in the primary. So I think, you know, I, I mean, I think that the failure, and it's easy to 
second guess the campaign after it's over. But with the millions of dollars he had to spend, he certainly didn't spend it wisely. Uh, yeah, we got 30 seconds post. left. If you could go quickly to the other issue of uh, the other resigning. issue is yeah. I, I don't think he had any choice but to resign. Uh, the majority leader post was a very very important post of raising money for the, for the candidates in the, in the fall campaign, and certainly a lot of the lot of the out lobbying community and others who give money to candidates uh, weren't going to give it to someone that's a uh, lame duck. Mm -hmm. So I think. I think I'd rather have the battle now than have it later. Thank you very much. Uh, great My to pleasure. talk to you, sir. Take care, Mary. Bye. Ed, Ed Rollins. Uh, and uh, it's, it's interesting because now there is going to be this uh, battle for uh, the majority leadership. But we shall see. Mary, we will see you next hour yes. uh, on the panel again. And uh, I'll be back with, uh, of course, the segment that you know and you love and you got to have and all that stuff. And it's known as Gimme Five. So uh, stay tuned right here on the Steve Malsberg Show. Don't go away. <laughs>